That's right. I'm supposed to change our little corner logo every time I'm doing a different video. So there's the logo for this one. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. This is our mini studio. We have quick sets. <laughs> Set change. <laughs> Makeup. Ah. Anyways, I wanted to give an introduction to... I forget what we're calling it. Um, home Bible Study? 101? HBS 101? Sunday Bible study? Anyways, we'll call it something. Jesus Gypsies, Jesus Bible study. Now we'll call it Home Bible study. So anyways, in preparing Vidivo to accept a wide variety of perspectives so that we could reach out and build things from the Vidivo format of just trying to give you some ideas to run with and to go with and to do and to accomplish those things that God has led you to do, I wanted to share with you how I learned possibly quicker shortcuts, so to speak, um, in the days of the Jesus movement that maybe will apply to you. Now, really, there's only one way to learn, and that's actually to go after Jesus with <laughs> your fingernails and clutch and grab a hold of and wrestle with him, you know, and to say, tell me, explain it to me, show me. And if you do that, you'll grow phenomenally. <laughs> Or if you argue with them and yell and scream like I did, you'll grow, but it may take a little while. The point being is that in my day, I was spoiled. I had lots of people that were all developing at the same time and had marvelous tools that were available to us that maybe you've either gone beyond and you're smarter now. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> or you could use these tools to benefit from. And so... In Home Bible Study 101, I want to introduce you to Navigators, but not to some big expensive set that you know you're probably going to have to pay money for or have to go way out of your way to find or spend a lot of incredible amount of who knows what. But the cheap stuff, you know, the things that don't cost nothing really, you know, because I try to make everything free and I'm sure you could find these materials free because I find them in used stores all the time. People are getting rid of them. <laughs> doesn't mean they're any good, it just means they don't know what they found because like a, a pearl in a field, you know, that's lost, you know, it's of great price. So you go out and you purchase the entire field in order to get that one pearl. I got pearls. So what I want to do is explain to you how to run a high home Bible study in a simple way. You can do it. All you got to do is read. You can just sit in front of a bunch of people like I'm sitting in front of this camera and I'll show you how to do it by pretending I've never done it before, and you're never been to one before. So, guess what, people? We need to go out and get three little books. These are all the books. Now, as a leader, you want to get this book, because this is the book that would be for people to read. And you see, they have these kind of booklets and setups, you know, like in all Christian bookstores. Believe me, if it comes to selling, Christians know how to sell. <laughs> and they say Jews or something. Boy, who we never thought to do. But anyways, the point is, is that in any Christian bookstore, you're going to find a huge variety underneath the topic of discipleship. I don't want to build a discipleship class here because, frankly, I don't think discipleship people really get to that degree unless they kind of decide to spend years as though they were married together and are willing to commit to that. And to me, that's discipleship. That's what the disciples did with Jesus. They were divorced from the world, married to God. Oh well. Gave up their livelihood in order to be with him, which was his liveliness. So, if you're going to run a home Bible study, and I wanted to introduce this to you, you can see, let's see, how much this thing cost? This cost a dollar twenty, and this cost seven ninety nine. Mm, I must have got it on sale. And this cost maybe it was all together. <laughs> Anyways, if it's not all together, just get the big one. You can find the little ones all over the place. But you see, this is like a little home packet thing. It's got these little bitty scriptures in them that come out, you know, and you can fold them up and they teach you how to memorize and do all kinds of neat things. And we're going to explain that as we get into week one. But I want to 
introduce you to this idea of home Bible study because the reality is you should have a home Bible study. You should be in your home a teacher. In other words, if you don't have a home Bible study, my question to you is, who's teaching your children? Are you? Because if you're not, you're failing. You failed what God wanted you to do. Are you teaching your wife? No, you're failing because that's what God wanted you to do if you're a man. If you're a woman, are you teaching your husband? No? Well, maybe he needs to repent. <laughs> because I don't care who's teaching. If you got a home, you should be having a Bible study. Some point in time, some place, if you can spend seven days a week watching TV, you can spend one day a week giving it to God for one hour in order to have a home Bible study. So you can do it your way. Then, if you really want to criticize or you know argue about other people that are in ministry, God bless you. At least you walked a mile in their shoes. Beginning to get the picture? <laughs> Until you tried it, don't deny it. In other words, Jesus said go out as part of the Great Commission and not just baptize and save people. He said go out and teach all nations. I forgot that part. Yeah. It's not preaching. It's teaching. Let's get real now. You, as a disciple of Jesus, you as a Christian, you as a follower even of Jesus, you as distant from God, believe it or not, can lead a home Bible study. It is super simple. It's made for stupid. <laughs> as a matter of fact, if I can do it, and everybody knows I'm a nut, you could do it too. You don't have to have a guitar. You don't have to have a singing voice. You don't have to sing. You don't have to do anything. But you do have to, at some point in time, decide that you're going to do it. And to be blunt, this lasts for only five weeks, maybe four weeks. Five. <laughs> I think. No, I'm kidding. It lasts five weeks. This is what I would say, bluntly, to every born again Christian in the world. You should go through or have gone through and then help someone else to teach their people to go through and have gone through the basics. People are always telling me, you know, back to the basics, back to the basics. Read your Bible, pray, do this. They got all these cute little things put on your fingers, you know. They got all this little thing going on, you know, and that's nice. You know, it all works. You know, but I want to take you to a place where you're going back to the Bible, not to some other cute little theological phraseology. And navigators was one way that in the early days they helped you to navigate your way to the Bible. These five scriptures will do that for you. As a matter of fact, Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa, one of their first home Bible study classes series when it first started to try to get organized with all these wacko pastors that were going out there starting their own churches that weren't really organized yet. One of the first things they did was the five scriptures. <laughs> Not ten, five. And that class had a phenomenal impact. It led the way to open up the doors for later Calvary Bible College, which was still kind of, eh, it's working on it, you know, it's still the Teachers Association building at the time, but it finally got going, you know, and I always wanted to go. <laughs> but every time I went, you know, the one time that I had the money to go, unfortunately it shut down. Oh well, for that week, for that month, or whatever. But I went up there for a conference once, you know, it was kind of cool, you know, we got a chance, you know, high school and junior high ministries together, or college and career and high school ministries together. It's the only time they ever did it, never did it like that again. <laughs> oh well, enough history. But the point is, is that Calvary Chapel did this once, you know, and it was phenomenal and ministers and pastors went out and started churches and got mega, you know, whatever. But I'm not telling you you're going to become a mega minister. I'm not telling you you're going to become a pastor. I'm not telling you you're going to become a teacher. I'm saying to you, everyone should take five weeks and try it. I personally believe that every person should go out and go on some mission also. I think there's always the opportunity to go on some kind of short-term mission, short-term teaching, Sunday school teacher if you want to, whatever it may be. But this is your opportunity now to do something that's going to change you in a lot of ways 
up here and cause you to know the reason for the hope that lies within you. Because Jesus said to you to go out and do it. And as he said to the disciples out as two, I'm here for you. You want to talk to me? Call me. Email me. Do whatever you need to do to get a hold of me and I'll walk you through it. Man, I don't care. You do what you want to do. Teach what you want to teach. As long as you're using the five. <laughs> and do it your way. Dictate. I don't care. <laughs> or just be blessed. But my point is this. You need to do it once. And then say, you've done it. Just like reading the Bible. You should have read the Bible through once. We're going to probably film, uh, if I can convince my wife to do it, she's going to go through these once. you know, And then she's probably going to find someone else to do it with. And it's just kind of like, it's not a multiplication principle. It's just the idea that you share, you care. You care enough to share, you share enough to care. you know. And you get to the place where the Holy Spirit will, if he's going to make you into a man of God, it could be the first step for you. Or, you know, if he's not, then at least you had a chance to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it, why to do it, and a better appreciation of those people who are doing it. So you see, there's really no reason not to that I can see. And you should pray and ask Jesus, but somehow I think since he already commanded you that unless he tells you no, he's already told you do it. So I just want to help you get through it, you know? So all we want to do it, do it. Come on, let's do it, do it. Everybody do it, do it. <laughs> and I'll get through it. <laughs> uh, wait. But you know that you could sit and do nothing. Or you are already a pastor or minister or whatever, and you just go, nah, I don't got time for this. It may surprise you. God might want to take you back to the basics for a simple reason that maybe you know it, but you didn't do it with someone else. And now you want to kind of like brush up, because I know how you guys are. Come on now, I've been to the pastor's conferences, I know. Come on now, i seen you in the dark, you know, when you don't think anybody's looking. Come on now, I know what you're like, your wife told me. <laughs> Oops. Maybe you want to brush up a little, you know, so that you kind of get smoother. So that you can just kind of like give it to your, your crew, you know, your posse, whoever it is, you know. And let them do it, but take them through it once. Because Jesus took his disciples, 12 only, one-on-one, -on, -one, on a regular basis, dealing with 12 men to become his disciples. 12 men that changed the world. So, the reality, and I know one fell, you know, don't go there, Judas, who cares, we got Paul. Anyways, going on with that, we have a means to an end of accomplishing what Jesus told us to do. So this will be the Home Bible Study 101 for those who want to, should, decide to, will be, and accomplish that which God wants to make in you if you'll allow Him five, five, one hours, more or less, of your time in five weeks. You don't have to do all five tapes or whatever it may be, you know, all at once, because it may be six. <laughs> I never can count, so who knows. But you don't have to do it all at once. But if you go through it with me, I'll show you the pitfalls and the blessings and the curses and all the other gentle things that go on, you know, sometimes in Bible studies, and what to watch out for and how the easy way and the hard way to do anything. Because I know all the ways. <laughs> I've tried them. <laughs> but in so doing, likewise, the Bible says, Holy Spirit says, His eyes roam the entire world looking for a heart who's looking towards Him, whose heart is perfect towards Him, that He may be strong on your or their behalf. Because when you are willing to admit, ah, you know, I, 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 I'm not really good at that. God says, I know, I am. You want to do it? Let's do it. Come on now. Let's get real. You could waste hours on lots of other things, and you already know you do. Whether it be television or whether it be some other situation, you know. Well, let's get real on Home Bible Study 101. That way you can move on to 201. <laughs> I don't know if there'll ever be a 201. <laughs> Frankly, right now, 
God didn't tell me to. But because Jesus has spoken my heart and has said, you need to do this, Michael. You need to, to tell the people. You need to share with them how easy it is to share the Word of God, even if it isn't just directly from the Bible, which people get confused and they throw you... One of the things I hate is I always hear people tell me, well, you know, we're going to put together this this packet for people. We're going to give them a Gospel of John. You know, and I read the Gospel of John and I threw it away because I thought, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I said, well, that's stupid. and threw it away. Now, when I read Matthew first, when I got saved, that made sense. My pocket New Testament opened up to Matthew, so I went, the genealogy of, and I went, ah, okay, I got this. And then it went down to who he was and where he came from and how he got here and all this stuff. And I went, well, that's logical. That makes sense to me. But frankly, the Gospel of John made no sense to me at all. I was kind of like, that's weird. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning was God, and there was a man called of God named John. I went, uh, you know, did I miss something? And I would, you know, kind of like, where's the rest of John? Because it starts, you know, kind of like not from the beginning. Not really, if you're honest. So, I always kind of wondered about all these little packets that they pass out and these things that they do. And me personally, whenever I led a home Bible study, I started in Matthew. <laughs> Maybe I'm Jewish. <laughs> I'm circumcised. <laughs> But we know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So God is at work both to do and to will of His good pleasure in all that we're doing in every way that we choose to abide in how He leads us as we do today. As you could, knowing these words and applying them to your life, even if you don't decide to do a home Bible study, these, and when we get to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I'll tell you, is it short most short, most short, shortcutistest. It is the short. It is the shortest shortcut that I know of to spiritual maturity in anyone's life, and I'll show you why. <laughs> well, I better live up to that claim. But your claim to fame ought to be you're willing to put it bluntly. Grow in Christ. This says it's a 13-week course for new and growing Christians. This one must go a lot farther, because mine was only five. <laughs> so, maybe I lied. No, I didn't lie. It's only five weeks. We're just going through beginning with Christ, because that's what we're doing. Beginning with Christ and five scriptures. Will you covenant with me? Will you agree to check it out? Will you, like, pass it around, take the video, run, you know, send it to someone, say, hey, Look at this dude, man. He even holds up right to the camera so you can find it. He says, look, we can make a quick snapshot of that. We don't have to buy the book. We could even go up and say, ooh, look at that. Man, that makes it so much easier. All i got to do is blow it up, and I don't have to go and buy the book because I can, after all, just look at those. And if I have a really slick, you know, one of those free download programs, I can just blow it up go ahead and make copies of it, you know, and I don't have to do anything. Or you could go on the internet, you know, and actually, to be honest, this is growing in Christ at a buck, who cares? But the point is, you can go on the internet and they'll even let you download Beginning with Christ and print it out on your own printer. It's that simple. You know, I might even put a website up for it, you know, from Navigators. Because the guy that designed it and wrote it, yeah, he'll let you. So it's no big deal. Just Recognize that today you've heard a way to prepare someone, whether yourself or someone else, to lead a home Bible study or to be involved in a home Bible study that you could affect someone's eternity forever. You could give them a confident expectation of the future as opposed to a fear to what's coming upon the world. I don't know about you. But if someone had given me this, I'd have a megachurch today. <laughs>